I'm Cindy Matsuki, host of International Hawaii, showcasing Hawaii's import and export businesses to help others new to the industry and also planning to grow. Today, my guest is Patrick Lau, founder and president of Saver Brand, local package and print house, also FTZ ex tenant. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, could you briefly let us know what Saver Brands is? Sure. Uh, Saver Brands, um, we're a local Kama'aina company. Um, we've been in business for 18 years and we supply, um, I guess, packaging to many food manufacturers uh, here locally um, and on the mainland and also internationally. Wow. So 18 years. How did you, how did you get started in this business? Um, we started basically, um, I guess, in, I guess, say early, what was that 2001, um, moved back home to Hawaii um, from Hong Kong, uh, was in the finance industry previously, but wanted to move back home um, and then actually got a job with a, a hedge fund here, um, managing, I guess, some funds here, but it's a lot different managing funds in terms of what I used to do, uh, which was um, basically index arbitrage, uh, discovered that uh, the middle of the Pacific isn't uh, the best place to do these types of things because the latency on the, uh, on the uh, I guess, um, putting in the orders digitally, mm. um, we're always gonna be late compared mm. to being right next to the exchange. So moved myself home back um, and essentially uh, was not in position to make the types of trades that I wanted to do. Um, and then 9-11 hit, so everything kind of fell out of the bottom and uh, was forced to figure out what we needed to do. Um, we have a young family and we said, hey, you know what? Um, Packaging is something that um, I had family in uh, China and decided to work with them and check things out and um, kind of stumbled on to it. And um, it, it's, uh, it's pretty good in terms of helping businesses um, kind of package themselves and present themselves and to look better in the market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, was that your goal in the beginning when you first started? Uh, the goal in the beginning um, is to actually just pay for healthcare. That's basically what we want. <laughs> pay for healthcare. Yeah, uh, yeah. And pay That's for important. your child's uh, preschooling. Uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of like baby steps. Uh, the expectations weren't um, very high, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's all about kind of trying to make something and do a little bit every day um, and building. So when you were first starting, what were some of your biggest challenges? And then do you think some of these challenges were unique to Hawaii? Um, I, I don't think the challenges are unique to Hawaii when you're starting up. Um, mm. it's, it's, it's all about, um, you know, it gets kind of overused a lot, but it's about mental toughness. Um, it, we, essentially, we, we, I had a rolling desk um, just looking for places in the house that I could actually work, you know, with with, with kids and, and things like that. Um, the, I guess you could say these are the types of challenges, but in retrospect, um, when you look back at it, um, it's all about believing in yourself, uh, believing in, um, luckily I had my wife, Mia was also a, a, a co-founder of the business and um, it's working things together. Um, for, for me, I guess, because we both have each other, um, it's a lot easier because you can actually have someone be a sounding board or share mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and that is actually a huge help. Mm -hmm. And I had read, and you actually mentioned that you kind of started off and stumbled a little bit on as far as like what you were going to import and try and sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that whole process and how, sure. how you pivoted? So, <laughs> so learning about, uh, I guess, logistics and supply chain. Um, that is that is something where sometimes it's 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 trial by fire. Um, you think that something's a great idea, uh, it's it's expensive, um, and you think that everyone needs it. Um, but 
I guess the devil in the details with respect to logistics and you probably right now supply chain is a very big deal because people are starting to get a better understanding of it um, in terms of how much Amazon does or e-commerce and things like that. Um, so in the very beginning when we kind of um, were, I guess, in going through the school of hard knocks, we would bring in items that were bulky. Um, that although they were a common use items um, for every day, uh, it just for a, a young entrepreneur just starting out, um, it was probably a little bit more than we could chew because when you bring in something bulky, um, the dollar value of that product is probably going to be um, not able to withstand the logistics costs. So automatically your costs of doing business in that product will go up. Um, so that's kind of how we first started. Uh, we would bring in um, all sorts of different things. I guess the thing that sticks out the most was like bento boxes because, um, you know, it's, it's a great product. Uh, people use it every day. Mm -hmm. um, but with respect to delivering, um, we can't deliver a, a thousand bento boxes. Um, I mean, a, a, it, you, it takes up a, a huge amount of space. Um, you got cases that are like two feet by two feet by two feet. Um, so it's kind of large. Uh, whereas if you did a thousand um, essentially like packages in terms of what we've been doing, um, you could essentially just kind of fit that in, in, in your trunk uh, and, and, and not have any problems. <laughs> so in the very beginning, um, you know, when you start something, you got to roll up your sleeves and, and you're, the, you're the delivery guy. You're the... <laughs> You're the, oh my God. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're the order, you're the customer service. So there's a lot of things that you're going to have to kind of roll up your sleeves and do. Um, and you want to try and minimize self-inflicted pain. So that's why <laughs> picking, picking something that um, can actually, uh, from a logistic standpoint, uh, ship very well. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. I mean, you already had an advantage too, because you know your supplier, right? Right, right. So that was uh, that was actually a huge help. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's practically half the half the battle. Um, but for those that don't know their suppliers, um, you know, it, it nothing nothing is better than just kind of hopping on the plane and, and, and visiting. If you believe in what you're trying to do, it um, you you need to actually do the research. Mm -hmm. You need to go mm -hmm. learn um, about your suppliers. Um, and that's why there's, there's a lot of horror stories about kind of buying stuff online and, and, you know, they pay their money and you don't get what you want to get. Um, but you have no one else to blame except for yourself because you have to put in the work. Um, mm. You have to go visit the factories. Um, you have to understand how they can help you and how you can actually work together. Mm. And do you find that it's I guess, especially in China or in Asian countries that it's more than just visiting. Do you actually need to build a relationship where you're visiting yeah. multiple so times or? It is, it is um, more than visiting, I guess, in, in the first time when we, when we did um, work with, with, with plants there, um, you do set the email and you do actually go visit. Um, mm -hmm. And when you visit, it's, it's great. You see everything. Um, and then you actually kind of have to trust what you've seen, um, meaning you <laughs> have to go in and start doing business. Um, and then after you do that, then what we what happened was a, a year afterwards, you go visit again um, and you recap exactly everything that's happened, uh, whether it be a lot of orders or one order, or if they didn't do something to spec or if they did something really well, it's just communication. Um, helps to build that relationship and it doesn't take much it just takes picking up the phone call, talking to them or you know doing things like zoom nowadays um, it, yeah. it helps so that's that's all the little things they all add up um, and to build the relationship mm -hmm. that's good oh I forgot to ask you one thing as we're rolling along how did you come up with the name Saber Brand um, <laughs> that we were we know we wanted we knew we wanted to uh, go into food packaging. Um, and at the same time, we wanted to um, have the, the, the word represent us kind of helping the, the, the food products that we're protecting. So I think that's how we came up with, with Saver, um, mm. all these different brands um, 
so that we can actually savor the, I guess, flavor or whatever <laughs> the product was. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, what is one of the worst things that you remember happening, like either the worst decision or the worst outcome that has happened during yeah. your business experience? Sure. It, actually, I can't say that there was um, a worst, uh, but what, what you have to kind of take everything in stride is that when you run a business or when you build a business, it's, I, I really truly believe this, it's a series of buffooneries, right? It's, it's a series <laughs> of, um, and, and how you actually bounce back from mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they, they cost a lot of money and, and, and they hurt. Um, but the only way you can get over it is to kind of think about and see what you did wrong. And then from there, you uh, move forward, right? Um, so I think when it's, when it's kind of small, when there's only like two or three people, um, it might be a lot easier um, mm. to overcome. Um, it gets harder when you have more and more people um, working with you. Um, but then that, what that comes along with that is uh, being able to trust, right? Mm. Uh, so those are always the, the, the challenges, but you know, when you surround yourself with great people, um, then things just do get easier. So in the very beginning, it's just being able to overcome whatever catastrophic errors that you make. Because in the, in, I guess in the big picture wise, as, as massive as that error may seem in the long run, it's actually kind of, you look back and you really do laugh about it. Um, but at the time you're like, oh my gosh, it's, it's, <laughs> it feels like be the end of the world, but it actually isn't. Mm -hmm. Can you give us one specific example? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, I guess if you go back to the, um, I guess you can go back to like the, the, the bento boxes. I mean, we, we, we wound up actually sitting on a container of, of those types of packages for forever. And we wound up just giving them away. Uh, we wow. wanted to give them away <laughs> perfectly fine. They were like awesome. Um, but you know, it, it was, it was a great lesson. Um, in terms of knowing that um, from a logistic standpoint or from shipping, there's things that you can bring in that are probably be a lot better. Um, mm. Thankfully, uh, we, we worked with, the, we we're in the foreign trade zone. I mean, we still have product in the foreign trade zone. So um, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't in terms of managing inventory. I mean, we don't have those types of issues. It made the pain a lot easier, um, but it's just things like that where you kind of, think about and reflect, being able to reflect is very important um, mm. uh, in terms of what to do the next time or what not to bring in again. Mm. Wow. And then you're pretty, I mean, considering for Hawaii businesses, you're pretty good size. And from starting with just you and your wife, how many people are in your company now? Uh, we have around 30 people. Um, wow. In, awesome. that, that work with us and it's 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 great you know, we have a great team um mm -hmm. and that's how important surrounding yourself with good people is is because um when you have everyone kind of you know the, in the same canoe right uh you, you go places um even though it, it might not be uh you, you hope that it's faster but at the same time if everyone's in the same belief you get there with greater certainty right mm. because with um i guess with business starting out it's not about how quickly you grow or how 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 much you can can do it's it's about the achieving consistency um and first and foremost being able to help customers um mm -hmm. because as long as you can help customers then everything else falls into place um, but once you start putting your needs in front of customers uh, then we start making decisions that probably aren't in the best interest of um, the company and the customers as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you have a, a large distribution like nationally. How did you know when your company was ready to grow and take that next step? Um, that it, it's, that's something where um, you put a lot of effort into everything that, that you do and, and, whether it's, it's a, if, if it's something that's kind of 
a small project or a big project, um, you're going to put the same type of effort into it. So for us, um, Mio and I got the um, factories to at a point where we thought, okay, good, this is this is a, a very very high level um, mm -hmm. that we're doing things at. We have great processes and um, we have a great product. So instead of limiting ourselves just to the Hawaii market, um, it's something where it was probably a good evolution to say like, you know what, we put all this work into it, let's kind of grow it and expand it. Um, so it's kind of understanding whether, uh, when you're ready um, mm -hmm. to go embark on the challenge. Um, I guess if it was just Hawaii, we would have been just as, just as happy. And I think every person is a little bit different where it's whether they want to go out and explore or they just want to kind of stay home and, and just kind of figure out things from there. Um, so it's, it really is, each person has their own different kind of journey and it's just whether or not they, how much they want to kind of push themselves and, 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 and challenge themselves. Um, so for us, it actually took like 12 years before we said, okay, let's do, um, <laughs> so that, that's a long time. Wow. So you've been like distributing nationally for about six years. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And how did you grow your market? Like, how did you find your customers when you uh, first started? It, you know, for, for us, it's, it's all about word of mouth, even locally um, in Hawaii. Um, we take care mm -hmm. of the people that we can take care of. And um, it's just referrals. Um, we're not really out there um, because our, I think our philosophy is a little bit different. We just, as long as we help someone, we know that someone else that they can refer us to someone else right and then at that pace that also gives us the ability to take care of those that work with us um, as best as we can um, mm. so we don't have um, a little we don't have a timetable on on growth um, we just want to do make sure that everything that we do is we do well there's more organic growth yeah it's a lot more organic growth um, and what, what we found that worked well for us is that um, we only needed one salesperson um, on the mainland so that um, when you have only one salesperson, um, that's one voice, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as they're a surrogate in terms of, um, and they believe the same things that uh, Mio and I believe in, then it makes it a lot easier for everything else to kind of fall into place. Um, so what we did was we had one salesperson and then we have um, a lot of um, customer service, people that take care of customer service. Um, and that really helps a lot so that um, each customer feels that um, they're being taken care of and they're not a number. Oh, and your customer service team, are they in Hawaii or are they mm -hmm. on the mainland? They're oh. here. Yeah. Oh. So we, we, Hawaii's home. Um, so we're, we're never going to move. Um, and we just figure out how to do things here. It's a lot more difficult. Um, it takes a lot longer, um, but it does get easier. That's the great part. Um, and now with technology, um, that's mm -hmm. what we were a big proponent, um, big user of technology, and that helps kind of um, bridge everywhere and makes the world smaller for us. Mm -hmm. Wow, so one salesperson. So that one salesperson, like the word of mouth is just as effective? as well in the mainland like once you have like one or two customers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um that's that's really that's that's great that's all you that's all you really need if um and then we also participated in shows um mm -hmm. but i think in the the i guess the digital age um we just really did it old school and we <laughs> canvassed um the u.s by visiting people so we would take um, sections of the country and he would just drive and visit. Wow. And bring product samples and. Yeah. So Paul, that's Paul. Um, that's his name. He used to just, he just get in the car and, and, and drive and visit. Um, wow. and Drink walk. a lot of coffee. <laughs> yep. We'd be, we'd visit uh, uh, cafes and because we do, I mean, we do a lot of majority on our mainland. Um, we just always focus on his on coffee. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, coffee packaging and things like that so that and that's another thing too is focusing on one thing a niche um as a, as an entrepreneur it's very easy 
um, to kind of get sidetracked mm. um, at many different things. And uh, it, it winds up kind of taking you away from your focus, right? Mm. So as long as you can kind of do something really, really well, that's essentially, you know, all you need. Mm, and you focus on that. Yeah. What did you, what was the biggest challenge in when you started to scale? Um, was it logistics or it was logistics uh but we 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 figured that out pretty good uh pretty well um it's communication making sure that we don't slip up in tending to uh customers needs um that that is always the most uh difficult portion part of scaling is being able to understand the needs of the customers mm. and because there's it's it's exponential right so you, you get more and more referrals the more referrals you need more people to kind of uh respond and do things like that so um that's that's always going to be the biggest challenge mm. yeah. is there anything that you would do differently uh, knowing what you know now <laughs> no not you know what not not really because i think that um trusting the process i mean we hear that all the time. So as long as you believe in something and, and you, you trust the process and um, you're patient with it, then it it normally, as long as you put your head down and you work hard, it, it does it does work out. Um, but you have to have that conviction um, and that belief. And sometimes it takes longer. I mean, sometimes it takes it's uh, it's it's quicker. I mean, for us, it 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 took took us twelve years to decide to go make that leap. So um, that's a long time but uh mm -hmm. it's but that was the process for us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and you had mentioned like i wanted to ask you how this whole pandemic and this environment has affected saber brands yeah so um from i guess the hawaii standpoint it's real tough uh the, the companies mm -hmm. that we work with locally um some have went under um some basically aren't aren't doing any business um and what we try to do is we try to support as best as we can um in terms of you know just just finding out and and calling and and talking to them and trying to figure mm. out what they what they need um but thankfully everything is going to just be temporary although albeit um it'll take longer to recover mm -hmm. um but it is temporary and the new normal is something that we just all have to adapt to um, there's nothing we can do to, to change it other than just kind of working every day and, and, and kind of helping whomever we need to help that time, uh, or understanding what people, the needs of our customers are, um, on the mainland for the coffee packaging. Um, it's a little different because, uh, we find that customers can't really go or our customers, customer can't really go to their cafes to go um, hang out and, and drink coffee. So what they mm -hmm. wind up doing is they brew coffee at home. Um, so as a result of that, they're going to need coffee packaging. Um, so that that's been kind of keeping us um, busy and, and 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 afloat during these crazy mm -hmm. times. Um, but it's it's still we still got to go a long way more. Um, uh, I but slowly but surely as long as we just kind of take one day at a time um things will always work out for all of us and it's that's uh just to stay positive um that's so important i think right now for everyone yeah so that was a good i mean it was a good decision for you to go nationally since it's helping you survive now yeah it, it which is it, good it helped um it helps it there's a lot of heartache that that goes into it uh but um <laughs> as long as you're patient um then it'll 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 sort itself out yeah mm -hmm. yeah i remember when we were talking you had said um you don't fail until you quit which is right. what i think is awesome yeah yeah the entrepreneurs soon, need to hear that yeah as soon as you throw in the towel then all that work that you put in is is uh evaporated right yeah. so um and if you believed in something in the very beginning to start with then um you 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 either you keep pushing all or you keep on pushing it right or but evolution innovation continuously learning is that's that's always going to be key mm -hmm. yeah so in on that note what's next for saber brands uh for us there's i guess there's a there's a few things um one is 
you know, fr from a packaging standpoint, we've been working on um, an industrial compostable product because um, of Bill 40. Um, so we have uh, a barrier product that actually can help um, manufacturers, food manufacturers uh, with the environment. Um, so single use plastics, um, Bill 40, we're, we're ready for that. Um, and in terms of kind of helping our customers um, just to be a little bit more earth friendly, uh, what we do as well is we are developing a reprocess and repurpose type of program where it's, it's called R plus R. So we set up, um, I guess, receptacles and, and boxes to be able to collect the packaging that we make um, and basically upcycle it. Uh, that's something that's, that, that we've been working on. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, been a lot of fun. That's that, awesome. So it's constantly innovating and yeah, adapting to yeah. what's coming. Right, 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 right. We have to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One last. This is our random question of the day. What is your favorite movie? Favorite movie. Um, <laughs> we, that's that's kind of hard. Oh. Uh, We've been, I guess you could say the favorite series or whatever. We've been watching a lot of uh, Marvel. So I guess Avengers oh. would have to, to, to be there. You know, yeah, kind of, all of them. <laughs> yeah, the whole cinematic universe. Yeah, they're all good. Yeah. Very cool. Um, thank you. I think all of this advice is, and just hearing your story is going to be good for people that want to start their businesses and start importing and figuring out what what they should be bringing in and how so thank you thanks for joining me and for sharing your story thanks for having me <laughs> right. so this this has been international hawaii i'm your host cindy matsuki and my guest today is patrick lau founder and president of saver brands they're an awesome packaging company packaging and print house so thank you, and we'll see you next time on International Hawaii on ThinkTech.